Hello and welcome and thank you all so much for joining us for today's um, US Town Hall. We're so excited to have you with us and thank you for giving up your time, whether it be early in the morning Pacific time or kind of lunchtime on the Eastern Coast. Um, delighted to have you with us and we really think that this event is a great opportunity to learn a little bit more about RSA US, our team, um, and for us to share a little bit more about any upcoming activities. So we really hope that this is an informative session, but more importantly, an interactive one. So we welcome your comments, your thoughts, and your feedback throughout the session. Um, feel free to pop your questions in the chat and we'll answer them as we go along. Um, and we'll also set aside some time towards the end of this event um, for a general discussion. So one quick thing to note before I pass over to my colleague is that unfortunately our historian in residence um, Anton Howes can't be with us today because he's currently on his honeymoon. So, you know, can't blame him for that. It's fair enough. Um, and so this means that we won't be covering the history of the RSA today, but fear not, um, or don't worry, we have tons of information that we can share with you. Um, you could also listen back to Anton's event that he recently did called Three Centuries of the RSA. Um, I'll pop it in the chat now in a minute. You can listen to the event wherever you get your podcasts or you can check it out on YouTube. Um, so without further ado and me blathering away, I just wanted to take a minute to just introduce our team so that you have a sense of who we are and what we do. Um, so if I haven't met you before, my name is Claire. I'm the community manager for RSA US. I'm sure I've spoken to some of you before. I've emailed you before. Um, you have seen my face at different events. So thanks for being here. Um, I, in case my accent didn't give me away, I'm an Irish woman far from home um, and my background's in the nonprofit sector and I'm always really passionate about bringing people together in spaces like this and, and meeting other folks and making those connections. Um, so thanks for, for coming here today and I'm going to pass over to Alexa, our, um, the US Director for RSA US. Over to you Alexa. Thanks so much Claire. So I'm Alexa Clay, I'm the US Director, I've uh, been in post for just over five years I used to live in London and would regularly go to events at RSA House. And I think the RSA right now is just at such a critical inflection point, which is really exciting about making the, the organization more global. And so really thinking about the potential that we have to ignite a global network of fellows and fostering connections between those fellows. I think institutionally what's always really made me gravitate towards the RSA is just the humanitarian ethos that the organization has, the restlessness that the organization has to, to pivot. And as a 260 year old organization, it's one that's perpetually in startup mode. And so we'll, we'll hear that a bit later in terms of some of the pivots that we're making strategically. Um, but what I what I've also enjoyed is just the spirit of informality. You know, it's an institution that was founded in British Enlightenment tradition and the coffee house culture. And I think that's something that we've really brought into the US network is creating connections for fellows, fostering serendipity, um, and really believing in the power of, of people. You know, the RSA institutionally is known as a national improvement agency. And so it's the aggregation of individual agency that's allowed for this institution to ebb and flow with the times. Uh, so that's, that's a bit about, you know, my passion and commitment for the RSA. My own background is in economic history. Um, and alternative economics. Uh, I did a book called The Misfit Economy, looking at innovation from pirates and hackers and gangsters and those in the informal sector. Uh, I've also worked with multinational companies on innovation and, and uh, sustainability strategies. And so I think my uh, approach to social change is very much one of hedging between various actors from those who are grass top stakeholders working on policy to those who are grassroots activists. And I get a lot of energy from working with people who have a lot of that diversity. Uh, next, I'm gonna pass it over to Rick Graffay, who's been a wonderful steward for the RSA US uh, to share a bit more about his background. Uh, thank you, Alexa. Uh, I'm Rick Graffay, uh, and as Alexa mentioned, I'm chair of the RSA US board. And I think it's appropriate that not only Claire brought this group together because she's been so spectacular in serving the community as a whole, but that Alexa should go first because Alexa is the leader of RSA US. I mean, my job at this point, <clears throat> and I've been on the, on the US board for, uh, I believe, six or eight years, um, but my role was to try to move it from a, a social institution to um, an organization that could be an influencer on policy and outcomes. And I think that the, the board's role <clears throat> at this point 
in supporting Alexa, Sean, and Claire with uh, an external point of view and to stay out of the way while they succeed. Uh, the other uh, role that I play, <clears throat> as, as Alexa mentioned, and when she mentioned that they, there's an inflection point, certainly in the history of RSA currently with the strategic direction it's pursuing, there was also an inflection point in RSA US when we made that shift toward trying to gain a greater relevance in terms of the consideration of social issues. And um, we, we probably jumped the gun there in terms of our own aspirations, which are now supercharged by the RSA's new strategy. And it's really giving us both the resources, uh, and, uh, the resources that are research and the resources that are financial to, to seize our own aspirations. Uh, but it also means that at the moment, my role uh, as an observer on the trustee board in London is to be to, to offer counsel on the culture and programs <clears throat> of RSA so that they truly are global and are relevant in an external context outside of the UK. My background is in journalism, um, in uh, strategic planning and technology planning for NPR and PBS. Uh, for 20 years, I was the director of AIGA, the Professional Association for Design, and sort of wrapped up my career as design thinker in residence at Williams College. So I'm in sort of the long tail here of a career. Uh, and um, my interest in, in RSA is that I think that it really can be an influential player in the civil discourse uh, in the United States. With that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Sean Klein, who's our Director of Policy and Innovation. Thanks, Rick. And I just want to echo kind of Rick and Alexa's sort of um, framing of our collective aspirations. I, I think we are at a really interesting inflection point. Um, I am responsible for expanding a portfolio of US initiatives focused on policy and program innovations. Um, I consider myself, I think, a, a restless optimist. And um, the nerdy side of me um, gets really excited about uh, all, all public goods, uh, parks, drinking fountains, libraries, public mm -hmm. transit, uh, all of those kinds of things that actually we've taken for granted. And I dare say we're kind of, have been kind of um, losing hold of over in the past few decades. And when I'm not RSAing uh, during the week, uh, I'm on bicycle adventures across California. Oh, um, my, my past life uh, was directing the San Francisco Office of Financial Empowerment, uh, which I'll touch on in just a minute. Um, and uh, spent many years working internationally in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, advancing kind of microfinance um, initiative. So really happy to join you all, um, and I'll pass it off from there. Great. Um, I just wanted to uh, kick back to Alexa, just as a quick kind of check-in, uh, warm-up activity for this event. Um, we are going to do a quick exercise um, called What Kind of Innovator Are You? So Alexa and Sean, over to you to explain to the masses what we're going to do. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. So um, if you want to go to the next slide, uh, basically one thing we love about the RSA is just the diversity in the network. And so we thought it would be a great opportunity just to get to know who's on this call a little bit more and hear about your own sort of trajectory and background. And so these are rough archetypes that we've used in various workshops in the past to uh, identify different change maker identities from the sort of disruptive thought leader who's bringing new ideas to the fast follower executioner that's converting those ideas to action that's leading on next and cutting edge practice to the shaman who's building capacity and supporting uh, and facilitating bigger groups to the fairy godmother, someone like Rick, um, who is a protective champion uh, within an organization. And so helping um, you know, create allyship and bringing up the next generation to net weavers, people who are natural connectors, um, to scanners, people that are obsessed with trends, um, to folks that identify with more of a status quo role, to the stabilizers who help to be shepherds of tradition um, and guard institutions against too much disruption. Uh, so these were some rough identities that, that we've teased out, but just curious if folks wanna share a bit in the chat function, the 
any kind of profile of innovator that you identify with um, or different identities that you've had in your career. We'd love to just get a sense of the richness of the folks uh, who, who are here today. And Sean, I think I wanted to put this question to you. I know you've had a lot of different hats and so curious if any of these um, particularly resonate. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, there's so many of these that resonate with me and I'm so excited to hear uh, kind of how, how others think about themselves. I think I find most affinity with um, the disruptor and net weaver. Um, you know, I mentioned just a few minutes ago that uh, in my past life, I directed the San Francisco Office of Financial Empowerment. Um, and in that role in city government, um, you know, I was advancing new municipal innovations like a collective workers fund for 20,000 low wage workers at San Francisco International Airport. Often I was a little bit ahead of my um, more senior elected officials and they got me in trouble, but I still associate my, I guess, find affinity with the disruptor. So I'd love to hear what others in the chat um, kind of think of themselves as. And maybe um, as folks are reflecting on this, I think clearly this could be an exercise that you spend. Um, a deeper meditation on, <laughs> but we'll do it rapid fire. Um, Nishan, I'm curious where you fit in within this taxonomy or just how, you know, I, th I think we've identified a lot of rogue and rebellious traits that you have. Um, so just curious for you personally. Sure, thanks, Alexa. Um, <clears throat> well, first before I start, I just want to do, um, just relay, I guess, a, a message of thoughts and prayers to the royal family. Of course, the the queen, the patron of the RSA, is um, uh, unwell, and um, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the news and what's going on there. So, I'm sure I relay the well wishes of the of the society when I uh, when I say that. But that said, onto the question at hand, um, it's quite a difficult one. I, I think, as so, how. For me, on a personal level, I think it's probably quite reflective of a lot of other fellows, right? Where we wear multiple hats, and I think my you know my role looking at these personas changes depending on what I'm involved in. So, so within the RSA, perhaps there's probably multiple. Um, maybe uh, for me, uh, like a, a shaman um, and and the the, the net weaver. Um, but then I can think of other initiatives I'm involved with with the IEEE Standards Association, where I'm very much a fixer looking at incremental approaches to standard industry standard standardization. Um, with my day job consulting, you know, that's very much frontline innovator, developing tech solutions and, and implementations and whatnot. So um, I think the beauty of this is that whilst we have these very specific personas, I think it's fair to say that um, a lot of people are perhaps transdisciplinary in, in approach. And, and diverse in approach, right? And I don't think that anyone really has a, a singular hat. And then just very briefly on Oops. where I fit in, in terms of these rogue processes, as you say. Um, so, I mean, I guess at the moment, I'm the RSA uh, Global Fellowship Counselor. That may not be the case in a month's time, but we shall see. Um, and we've obviously been conspiring around um, activity within Canada uh, and um, having a a, a North American, uh, dare I say it, uh, approach to things, but really as as a as a frame or a a launch pad to uh, wider global activity that isn't necessarily London or UK centric. I, I know that we rest on a lot of legacy and history, but at the same time, um, I think we, it's, it's safe to say that we can use that as a pivot to um, really amplify things across the board. And just to touch on what Rick said. Um, about the RSA being a, a, a social engine, but also pivoting to a policy and systems change maker. I think really what's, what's I think what I like about the design for life strategy with the pathways is that it's really giving a broad spectrum of, mm -hmm. of where the RSA can, and the fellows of course, can um, implement and work on various types of change with various levels of activity, right? So that's just my thoughts and I'll I'll put a cork in it. I'm British. I'll, I'll keep going on forever. Otherwise. So I'll, I'll, I'll know for someone else. Um, it's, it's so great to see so many um, people wearing multiple hats in the chat saying that they are um, a combination of everything. Um, Alexa and Sean, do you have anything to add to that before we move on? Are you happy to see people's responses in the comments in the chat? No, these are awesome. 
Yeah, yeah, I great. think it's great to just see the diversity and um, it felt like there was balance between a lot of these different archetypes. So that's wonderful to see as well. Yeah, that's great. And um, thank you for um, Melly for encouraging me to zoom in. I hope you could read it properly. There's a lot of a lot of content there. Um, great. Well, thank you so much, Alexa and Sean. Um, I know I'll be coming back to you both in a minute, um, but just I wanted to move along to jump straight in. I know our time is, is um, super important to give you a quick overview of our agenda for today um, and the time that we have left. Um, obviously, we've we've introduced y'all to each other and um, we've, we've kind of got a sense of who's in the room. Um, but we are going to talk a little bit about RSA US mission and strategy, some upcoming activities for 2022, um, some opportunities for fellows and engagement. Um, we'll hear from some of our fellows and their respective networks that they lead on. And we'll have time at the end for general discussion, Q&A. Um, so please either you know, hold your questions till the end of each kind of section. If that's helpful, come off, um, come off mute or pop your questions in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. So over to you, um, Alexa, to just speak about strategy. That would be great. Yeah, so Nishan referenced the Design for Life mission. And so since the new chief executive, Andy Haldane, has joined the RSA, we're really thinking about the RSA much more uh, as an institution that supports change making at every life cycle. And so that means starting with interventions that impact children and early years and early education, all the way to um, students, to entrepreneurship, um, to older generations of fellows. Um, and so that's, that's one of the key pivots that we have. I think what's really important to note here is you know, in the past 10 years, as the RSA has developed a bit of a reputation and identity as being more of a think tank institution, what the Design for Life agenda really allows us is to break down the walls between our thought leadership work and our fellowship. And so that means that a lot of the work that we do in the world is not going to be a function of kind of in-house practice or R&D, but it's going to be staff members supporting fellows in the work that they're doing um, in the field and connecting those fellows with each other around uh, this life cycle approach. And so this means that we'll have a much more collaborative RSA. Uh, we'll have a lot of resources that we can put at the disposal of fellows in terms of being a platform for elevating good ideas, for connecting practitioners around cutting edge themes. And for, you know, unlocking innovation and creativity, particularly in a place-based um, sense through some of our geographic hubs, as well as through more cosmopolitan networks that cut across really important issue areas. So we're excited for what this new mission means for the RSA. I think it also has real implications for a more global strategy uh, for having uh, the RSA be much more than a social house in London, but to really be a global network connecting fellows from around the world who are working on systemic challenges. And just Claire, if you want to go to the next slide. Sure, yeah. Um, I was going to say to everybody, feel free to pop any questions or clarifications that you may have um, as Alexa's talking, and we'll get to them in a bit. But yeah, over to you. Great. So these are the different pathways that are identified um, where we're really looking for you know, co-creation and collaboration with fellows, starting from early years through to systems. I think the RSA has this aspiration to be much more of a knowledge common commons for fellows and different organizations and groups that are working on social change uh, to support next practice, to engage with companies around being more purposeful in the world, to work with entrepreneurs, to support social mobility. I think there's a huge agenda that Andy's bringing um, as an economist through some of the leveling up work that he's done around the power of an organization like the RSA to allow for social capital to be shared, to support social mobility by connecting younger change makers with folks that are in more established careers. And I think the key here is that social impact will cut through um, all of the different projects and initiatives that the RSA gets off the ground, that each initiative uh, will not just be UK centric, but will really have global reach. And there'll be opportunities for real time learning uh, with practitioners across these fields. So uh, right now, if you haven't seen the Design for Life paper, we'll, we'll pop it in the chat. I think it's a great 
um, but dense primer on some of these ways in which the RSA is mobilizing. And following from that, we'll have a much more clear cut invitation in terms of how you can get involved, how we might be able to collaborate on the different ways that you can plug into the RSA ecosystem. Great, thank you so much, um, Alexa. Just a quick, um, just a quick opportunity to, to kick back to, to all of you all in the room. If you have any questions or clarifications or observations, feel free to come off mute. Um, it's your time. <laughs> uh, if not, you can pop questions in the chat. We're happy to just keep going, but we just wanted to give you the, the space to digest and, and ask any questions that you may have. Um, and if not, I'll move it along. You can pipe up. Okay, great. Perfect. Um, so I wanted to pass over to Sean um, to speak a little bit more about areas of his work um, and kind of what's next. So I will pass over to your good self, Sean, and thank you so much. Great. Thanks, Claire. And hello again, everyone. Um, I'm going to spend just a little bit outlining some of RSA US's recent work and some new frontiers. Uh, but please feel free to interrupt me or ask questions or add your reflections because uh, I think we're really keen to engage fellows in, in kind of sense making and identifying new opportunities. Um, I think most importantly, I'll, I'll start to just talk a little bit about um, a program that we wrapped up in June. Uh, we just completed a nine month uh, New Jersey Future of Work Accelerator program that supported 20 for-profit, non-profit and hybrid, hybrid social enterprises. Um, our survey of participants suggested that the need was really on equipping this cohort to do business with the state of New Jersey, um, navigate the grant and venture funding landscape in the state, um, and build strategic relationships so they could expand and focus on scale. Um, what was really, I think, powerful about this accelerator program is that it was the first of its kind government-hosted accelerator um, that was a partnership between the RSA the Workers Lab and the New Jersey State Office of Innovation. Um, the accelerator was designed to advance worker voice, power, safety, and economic security. Um, and the really diverse cohort in the program's work spans skills development, job training, job placement, apprenticeship, worker education, um, worker focused technology, and cash transfers and community organizing. Um, just a, a quick reflection on that whole process. Um, it really built on an economic security um, accelerator that the RSA um, developed in the UK um, with MasterCard funding and partnership. Um, the very diverse makeup of this cohort in the US, um, and when I say diverse, I mean organizational maturity, size of the organization's legal form, for-profit, nonprofit, hybrid, uh, their work domain, technology, community organizing. This was all really an asset uh, as it offered a tremendous opportunity for cross-pollinization of ideas and practices. However, <laughs> that big tent um, of organizations also challenged us, I think, challenged our ability to design for all needs and balance kind of the curriculum breadth and depth. So we've been reflecting on that as we kind of advance our place-based work in the US in any case, it offered a tremendous learning and sharpened our lens on place-based work. Um, one other piece that is still ongoing, I want to touch on quickly as well, and that is um, with financial support from the MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth, we've been working closely with RSA colleagues in London to support technology firm Bayes Impact uh, to test and expand its online digital career coaching and career training platforms in France and England, and also to help Bayes Impact position itself in the American market. Uh, and an initial win uh, in the US to help Bayes um, was to connect them with the New Jersey Office of Innovation, uh, where I think there's a potential partnership we hope to see uh, this fall. So where does that kind of leave us uh, under this pivot to this new strategy going forward? Um, it's leading to some really interesting new opportunities we're exploring. Um, this includes a partnership with the Economic Security Project, Universal Income Project, and EPIC and Poverty in California to strengthen workers and families' access to public benefits um, starting in the state of California. Um, other collaboratives, uh, collaborators on this initiative include the Workers Lab, Aspen Institute, 
and a variety of other policy organizations. Um, importantly, I wanted to point out that um, a really central piece of this initiative is also engaging a large number of individuals across California with lived experience or lived expertise navigating the complex and fraught kind of uh, benefits um, system um, in the United States and specifically in California. So we've engaged those folks along with um, benefits administrators and policymakers in a human-centered design process to identify some next steps um, that we can really move the needle on benefits access and equity in uh, the US starting in California. Um, and just lastly, I'll say this initiative kind of came out, came as a result of our focus on economic and security in New Jersey uh, and elsewhere, and our analysis of growing income and wealth inequality in America and ways in which the COVID-19 pandemic has really laid bare stark inequities for those at the economic margins of our economy. Um, importantly, we're starting to see this benefits access work I just spoke of converging um, with this growing interest in <clears throat> basic income or unconditional cash assistance across the US at the city and county level. Um, in fact, um, I've just learned that we're at actually more than 100 active basic income pilots supporting low-income residents and residents of color across the United States right now at the city and county level. So our partnership on benefits access in California is reinforcing a growing movement to recast America's social safety net uh, as a critical public good that can provide economic floor for everyone. And as I mentioned at the outset, we're really keen to engage fellows in this work and help identify kind of new opportunities that might extend um, this focus. So why don't I leave it there? I'd, I'd really welcome any comments or reflections you all have or work you're, you're engaged in that might have connective tissue with what I just outlined. Um, and as I said, feel free to come off um, mute or pop your questions in the chat. And obviously no pressure, we need to sit and think about that for a little bit before you come back with any questions or comments. Um, I saw that there was one or two questions there in the chat. I'm just gonna hold them for now until we, um, or Alexis is on it. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of get back to, to some of them in a bit more detail when we get to uh, kind of fellowship engagement, talking a little bit more about the nitty gritty kind of stuff around that. So um, thank you so much, Sean. Um, and I'm just gonna pass over to Alexa to talk us through our strategic direction. And um, we'll kind of explore a little bit more about kind of fellowship engagement in the, in the next slide. But thank you, Sean. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, Sean spoke to some of the great work that we've been um, doing, and I think it's been fascinating just to see the way in which the UBI conversation since COVID went from a kind of utopian fiction to mainstream practice. And I think RSA at its best can really help those kinds of ideas mainstream. Um, and so that's what we're committed to working with our fellows to help build um, coalitions for change around your ideas around the things that you're really invested in. Um, so part of that from a strategic point of view is really better connecting our fellowship with some of the key RSA programs and areas of impacts um, where we can make significant bets. And um, a huge component of that is just curation, understanding the projects our fellows are working on and understanding where we can add value and be helpful um, by putting the RSA platform behind those projects. Uh, another component of our strategy is really around growing distributed groups of RSA fellows around the US. And so that's done through the frontline work of our ambassador team. I saw that Jason was on the call who runs um, the Boston chapter and has been you know, supporting wonderful events there. And I think so much of the beauty of the RSA is really meeting with fellows in person and getting to know folks in your local community. Um, that's been, you know, was obviously put on pause during the pandemic, but uh, really excited to invest more in our regional approach now that people are starting to get together a little bit more and have those opportunities uh, for collaboration. So we're scaling up our presence in different cities. If you're curious about the ambassador role and want to learn more um, or want to bring an RSA hub to your city, uh, happy to have that con conversation. So feel free to email Claire or I. Uh, if you're in a city and want to understand if there's an ambassador in your city or what the plan of events are, feel free to email uh, us as well and we can, we can get into that. 
another component of the strategy has always been just the cross-generational element at the RSA. One of the um, ways in which fellows find a lot of meaning through the US network is the mentorship program, which connects um, fellows that you know, have a key growth area or challenge that they're working on or want to take a professional leap or are dealing with something at a personal level and matches them with folks that have lived experience or expertise or disciplinary expertise to support them. And so that those have been really deep and rich and meaningful conversations. And I think, um, you know, speak to the new mandate that Andy's thrown down in terms of supporting RSA fellows in, in nurturing and extending that social capital that we all have access to. Um, so again, you know, the, the network piece of the RSA um, is really, you know, top of mind that we're continuing to push for diversity in the network, welcoming more young people, welcoming, um, you know, more kind of frontline folks and communities that are most affected by the impact challenges that we've been working on and supporting a more global fellowship. So those are, those are really the sort of four buckets that um, we've been pushing for and that are staying the same. There's a lot more detail about this in uh, our orientation guide. And so we'll share the link to that and you can find out a little bit more information there. Um, but Claire, if you wanna to click to the next slide, um, these are just some of the key ways in which we've come to codify different roles that um, fellows can take in the US ecosystem. And so, you know, historically, the RSA has always existed based on the goodwill of volunteers and sort of private citizens' ability to, to offer and, and serve something bigger than themselves. So we have wonderful thematic network leads. Zoe's here today, who's going to talk a little bit about the the thematic network she's been running. Um, that's a great opportunity to host regular conversations within the RS community around a particular topic of interest. Uh, we've also been um, supporting coalition leads. So people that really care about a particular advocacy objective to network with other fellows, um, you know, to support power building and, and movement building around that advocacy challenge. So uh, an example of that is the Decolonizing Design Coalition that was started a few years ago that brings fellows together from around the world to think about how we decolonize design practice. Um, you know, Rick mentions uh, his six to eight year engagement. I think we've lost track of of time there, but um, you know the U.S. board is made up of a number of fellows who volunteer their time to help steward us as an institution. We also have fellowship counselors that um, uh, Nishan is one, um, and our geographic ambassadors that I've mentioned before. One role that we're thinking of putting a bit more energy behind is systems entrepreneurs and residents, which really give um, a platform to folks within specific RSA sort of pathways work to, um, to collaborate more deeply with RSA staff um, around a specific set of interventions. So stay tuned, we'll have more details for, about that in the fall. And then another great way to volunteer your time is through the mentorship program, um, especially in helping younger fellows navigate some of the challenges they're facing. I think um, we've heard great things from mentors who have participated just around you know, the power of connecting with the younger generation and also just what happens with reverse mentorship, what you can learn from younger people that are coming into the fellowship. Uh, so those are just some of the different ways you can get involved. Um, and if you have any questions, I've, I see some people are interested in, in the ambassador roles or some of these other volunteer positions, just contact Claire or myself um, and we can we can have a one-to-one. -one. Hi, Alex. I just saw there was a comment there from Melly about um, the mentoring program. Would you be able to speak a little bit more about um, kind of next steps or where that's at, or just so that in case people are, are kind of curious about it at this stage? Yeah, so we'll, the next cycle of the mentorship program um, will be uh, is starting in January. So we're going to have um, folks being able to apply both as mentees and as mentors this fall. Um, so yeah, Melly, we'll be putting out um, word in the newsletter. If you'd like to sign up, um, that would be great. And, um, you know, October I think Octavia is here. She participated in the mentorship program in the past and some wonderful things happened for her. So I'll let her share, but um, she can give you an idea of the kind of range of, of kind of support that happens through the mentorship program. 
I know we're catching you on the hop here, Octavia, but if you are comfortable sharing your experience now, feel free to do so. Um, and if not, we can we can leave that till the end. Um, so yeah, no problem. I, I'd be happy to, Claire. Great. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, Alexa. And thank you, Melly, for your question. Um, I served on the steering committee that was putting together some of the frameworks and ideas for the very first iteration of the RSA US mentoring program. And then after that, I was a mentor. And then the following year, when the call to action came out, I, I raised my hand and said, hey, I want to be a mentee this time. Um, at that stage, I wanted to write a book um, and was trying to figure out how to navigate that. And it happened. <laughs> um, my book is behind me. The mentors I was matched with through the RSA were just phenomenal and they really changed the trajectory of my work. So I thoroughly recommend it whether you're looking to support someone else or whether you're looking for support. It's a really fantastic program. Thank you so much, Octavia. That's great. And just hearing that personal experience is super helpful. Um, and Nelly, if you have any more questions about that yourself, feel free to email me or email Alexa. Um, I've popped our email details in, in the chat there. Um, great. Thank you so much. Um, and I just wanted to pass over to a couple of fellows that we have on the call with us today to just really speak about they, their personal experience as fellows and the networks that they lead. So I'm going to kick off, kick off, oh my gosh, sorry, with Rick. Um, and then I will pass to Octavia and then we'll, we'll pass to Zoe to just speak a little bit about their role as fellows um, and kind of give you that kind of personal experience, which would be great. So thank you so much. And over to you, Rick. Uh, thank you, Claire. <clears throat> so as a testimonial, I'd like to just mention what the institution itself has meant, because my exposure to uh, the RSA was, um, and you know, from a background I already described, where uh, it, it dealt largely with working with creative professional NGOs and policymakers on solving complex problems. But when I first encountered the RSA, I felt that it was an institution that had some um, Pretty unusual attributes, and I encountered it from the journal, from the journal, and some um, presentations that Matthew Taylor had made. And I realized that here's an institution that not only honored creativity and innovation, but it also believed in in the in the application of innovation. I mean, look at the title itself: Royal Society of Arts, Manufacturers, and Commerce. It was research based. It was articulate in presenting its findings. It clearly considered context. In, in the work that it did. And it, it tended to test recommendations that it made on policy issues uh, within the urban environment or the policy environment in the UK. And so I thought all of these attributes were things that from my own experience and working closely with the World Economic Forum, PopTech, TED, Aspen Institute, th these were all attributes that actually were missing uh, in the policy arena in the United States. And uh, I felt that it there was a potential for it because RSA is, is nonpartisan, it's objective. Uh, it could be evidence-based and bring with it the examples of how policies might've played out in the UK without suggesting that those were answers for the US, but that they, were, uh, they could contribute to developing policies that were impactful and relevant. And when I looked at the RSA, <clears throat> Much as, as uh, Nishan said in the chat that the fellows are the, are the power bank, uh, I felt that the attributes that the RSA had was its, its extended legacy, the research resources that it had in Britain, a very small agile staff in this country once we began to hire up, uh, and, um, and the fellows. I mean, the fellowship is something that is a deep resource for us that we can mobilize, hopefully. Um, and we believe, the board believes, and I think Alexa and, and Claire and Sean believe that um, just as the fellows are an incredible resource for RSA, RSA should be an incredible resource for fellows. As you pursue things of interest to you that can make a difference in the human experience, you ought to question whether or not the RSA can be behind supporting that and become a lever for your own success and impact. And so all of those attributes are things that drew me to, to the RSA and to taking on the leadership role 
with the board. Back to you, Claire. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, that's great. I'm going to pass over to Octavia, who you've heard from um, briefly, uh, speaking about her experience as a mentor and a mentee, um, and now to just talk a little bit about her experience as a fellow and a network lead. Um, so over to you, Octavia. Oh, thank you so much, Claire. And Rick, I would love to underscore that the RSA has been an incredible resource to me personally. Um, I became a fellow, I think 11 or 12 years ago, um, completely out of the blue, received a letter from RSA House, um, turned to my husband and said, are you familiar with the Royal Society of Arts? And he said, oh yeah, absolutely. I received a bursary from the RSA in the 80s and used those funds to um, travel and do work experience in the United States. And it had a really profound impact on my husband's career and the RSA has had a really profound impact on mine. Um, I am a career coach. Um, I work with organizations to support the career advancement of their underrepresented professionals and deliver workshops and training and coaching for their employee resource groups. And I'm the author of a book called Prep Push Pivot, Essential Career Strategies for Underrepresented Women, and I lead the Gender Equity Network for the RSA US. Um, we host roughly three events a year. They are discussion-led events designed to further the dialogue on equal rights, status, and opportunities regardless of gender. What I love to do is to bring together brilliant people from inside the RSA and outside the RSA to connect and share ideas. Um, some of our recent events have included closing the gender pay gap, um, women in politics 2020 and beyond, and diversifying podcasts. Um, we host roundtable discussions, we have fireside chats, it's open to all. Um, I really appreciate the fellows who have reached out to me via LinkedIn or via the page that Claire's just shared in the chat. Um, please do reach out if you have a question or want to learn more, you can, you can find me on LinkedIn. And as Rick and Alexa and Sean and Claire have alluded to, in addition to the networks, there are just so many ways to connect with the RSA personally. I've been involved in a Diaspora Changemakers program that RSA has um, led um, about eight years ago. I've served on the RSA US Diversity Committee. I participated in the mentoring program on the steering committee and as a mentor and a mentee. And I also um, was on the events committee for an event that the RSA hosted with the British American Project here in Los Angeles. Um, I'm based in Los Angeles and would be happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm on mute. Uh, how many years have we been doing Zoom? And uh... Yeah, there we go. Still did it. Um, thank you so much, Octavia. I really appreciate your um, personal experience. And um, it's great to hear more about the Gender Equity Network. And we're also keep like scheming for the next event with the Gender Equity Network. So keep your eyes peeled in for um, more information via email. Um, but I just want to hand over to Zoe now to just speak a little bit more about her experience as a fellow and the network that she leads. So over to you, Zoe, and thanks for being with us today. Oh, no, it's a pleasure. Um, thanks very much. I'm just going to put um, our network, the Augmented Society Network, into the chat and also uh, my business uh, website there as well. I got a similar letter actually to Octavia and I think it was 2003 and I'd got no idea, although I had heard about the RSA then and it said, do you want to uh, get involved? And I thought, sounds good to me so I did that was in London back in the early 2000s if I move forward I, I used to go to RSA house I loved going to the physical events and then uh, my husband said to me uh, how do you fancy moving to America and I said yeah sure great yeah thinking that's not going to happen but it did happen. <laughs> and actually uh, to not just anywhere but to Las Vegas so I found <laughs> myself in a in a very new place that that robbed me initially of conversation and I, I need those connections so I was determined to make those connections here uh, in Nevada in I think it was about 2018 I uh, co-organized an event around CES here which is the big consumer electronics show in in Las Vegas 
hundreds of thousands of people come to that. It was an amazing uh, event. I was given funding uh, from Alexa actually to, to get that off the ground. In 2019, I started the Augmented Society Network and that has been going from strength to strength um, with uh, regular monthly meetings we talk about the effect of technology on society and equally society's effect on the kinds of technologies that we use. I'm very aware that I personally would be a technology champion and I'd be all over everything. And then I'd realized that the Pandora's box that I'd opened and encouraged, I have a much more uh, uh, controlled or, or formed view now of what I think is fantastic and that's what we look at what is it that we're bringing into the world what is it that we want uh, and how can we actually understand the impact of some of the technologies that are rolling out uh, currently during the pandemic we started our first project which was uh, the opportunity to reimagine learning I'll put that uh, in the chat as well and that was 30 authors uh, from around uh, the world, basically, because I, being in uh, Nevada, felt slightly <laughs> obviously removed from things. So I was determined to progress the RSA's global uh, stuff, for want of a much better way of putting it. So my determination was to keep those connections going. So we did our 2020-21 project. We launched that with Anthony Painter. You can see that on YouTube. Uh, that's the last link. We just started our Creativity Offers a New Formula for Life, which we launched yesterday. We had a tremendous start, and that's simply about using creativity as a way to enjoy life more, to think differently, to see change and understand what you really can't understand but put yourself in a position where that might become possible so please join us uh, for that it would be wonderful to see you there we talk every month uh, our next topic is why is it so hard for us to listen which is going to be very interesting for me because I do like to talk so can I actually listen <laughs> I don't know uh, but we've got some great thinkers on there we have about 30 or 40 people that meet from all over UK, East Africa, South America, North America, uh, Europe. Uh, and that comes from that desire to remain global whilst being virtually here uh, in Las Vegas and quite frankly, enjoying what is a very misunderstood city, actually. It places itself at the forefront of innovation and boy, are there some great hikes and things to do outside. So come to Vegas. <laughs> and join the Augmented Society Network and you will have great fun. Thanks ever so much. That's great. Thank you so much, um, Zoe. And you'll be sorry you invited all of us to Nevada. So um, <laughs> that's great to hear a little bit more about your experience as a fellow and also um, your work with the Augmented Society Network. So I just wanted to quickly flag some, well, not quickly, we're more than happy to spend some time on this, some upcoming activities for 2022, um, things that are coming up, things to put in your diary. Um, I see that Alexa just responding to Corey there in the chat. So um, I'll get her to, to cover pop tech in a minute, but I just wanted to flag a few things that have been going on and that are, are gonna keep going on, I suppose, for the remainder of the year. We've launched our fellowship engagement circle, which is essentially a space for us to invite fellows in to, work with us and collaborate with us on creating um, engagement opportunities for our fellowship. So designed with our fellows for our fellows, as opposed to us writing up a, a strategy and engagement opportunities um, from my desk very far removed from a lot of y'all. So um, that's been a really great experience and I'll speak a little bit more about that. I have also seen that one or two of um, our participants are on the call. So I might call on you to, um, to give your feedback on that if you're comfortable doing so. Also, we um, have a call out for some new ambassadors based on place-based um, support and also thematic-based support. So at the moment, we're currently looking for um, fellows to join us who are based in Anchorage, in Philly, New York, um, DC, Chicago, Seattle, Pittsburgh, and Houston. Um, so if that is of interest to you at all, you'd like to learn more about that, you'd like to hop on a call with me, 
feel free to drop me an email. Um, I'm claire.burn at the RSA dot org um, and I'm happy to, to answer any questions that you may have. It's really great for us to kind of start ramping up place based um, events and support for fellows as we all emerge from our cocoons um, from the pandemic and just really seek those kind of in person connections. Also, there be a, there has been a launch of um, or not has been we are still in the testing phase, but soon to launch um, our new digital platform, um, often referred to as Circle, for um, RSA fellows. So this will be a space, a digital space for fellows to connect, to share information, learnings, opportunities, um, and for the RSA as well to to best kind of channel information to our fellows and to kind of really start to bring people together based on um, emerging themes, areas of interest and places. So essentially kind of trying to replicate that in-person um, connection and support in a virtual space. Um, and hopefully we'll really play into a lot of our um, ambitions for kind of global reach and global growth to really bring fellows together from across the world um, uh, on common themes and topics. So there's that, and I'm happy to speak more about that as well. We continue to run monthly salons with our fellows, um, and we really encourage fellows to reach out to us and to design these together. We are happy to support you in teasing out what we think would be a topic that would resonate with the US network and how best to kind of frame it and in looking at people to invite to speak to various different um, topics. And like Octavia said, from within the fellowship and outside the fellowship. So more than happy to talk about that. They usually take place on the third Thursday of every month. Um, and we have some exciting events coming up in September on the neuro arts and how it can help our well-being. to talking about creative loss in October and scheming for events on sense making and wayfinding and serendipity in the new year. So um, we're always uh, excited to hear what is of interest to you and what we can, how we can best curate events for you. Lastly, and then I'll stop talking, um, I've recently started doing community office hours for, for fellows to, to come and meet with me and to, to ask any questions that you may have, especially as if you're new to the US network, oftentimes it can be a bit overwhelming or disorienting and you don't know where to even start. Um, so I'm more than happy to hop on a call and just help almost like demystify, if you want to call it that, the RSA. And, and help you kind of find your way through it and connect you with people who may be working or researching or um, uh, using a lot of the same kind of tools and, and networks that you um, you are, or like if you want to access different, different people and, and access people in the network. So I just popped that in the chat there. You can access my, my calendar. Um, and I will, I saw Bernard that you said the circle platform. Um, if you would like to be involved in the testing phase, I can email you directly um, and we can sort that out because we're still in testing phase. But it, the more eyes we have on it and the more feedback we have on it, the better. So enough from me. Um, I will pop anything else in the chat there as we go along. And I just want to pop over to, um, or hand over to Alexa to speak a little bit about PopTech and what that is going to mean and what it's going to look like for ourselves. Thank you. Great, thanks, Claire. So yeah, lots of interest in Circle. We'll definitely send invites to the beta um, following this town hall so that folks can poke around and get a sense of the functionality there. Um, and yeah, coming out of the pandemic, we're really excited to meet in person. We're all gonna be in PopTech in DC towards the end of October, October 27th to 29th. Uh, Andy's coming from the UK. I will be there, Sean will be there, Rick will be there, Claire will be there. We'll have our DC ambassadors there. In addition to attending the conference and putting on a workshop, we're also gonna be hosting some satellite events for fellows who those, for those who don't know what PopTech is about, um, it's really a wonderful platform for getting to know sort of unique voices and they have a brilliant curatorial team who bring together people from various disciplines, from informal institutions, from formal institutions, um, and it's going to be taking place in Washington, D.C. this year with some terrific partners, including Eaton Workshop, uh, which has been a partner of ours in the past, a, a hotel dedicated to social change. Um, so that's that's a terrific venue. Uh, we'll follow up with an invitation link to that. So if you're interested in attending, we do have a discounted ticket price for fellows. Um, so really look forward to seeing a lot of you there. Great, thank you so much, Alexa. Um, I am going to uh, talk to you a little bit more about the fellowship engagement circle um, and feel free to stop me with any questions that you may have or um, pop it in the chat there as well and I'm more than happy to answer your questions as we go. Um, 
So the fellowship engagement circle, like I said, was a call out to our US network to see who is interested in working with us in a voluntary role to help um, co-create, co-design our engagement offerings for our US fellows. And I just thought it, this is a great opportunity to share some of our findings to date based on the kind of clusters or emerging kind of topics or areas of interest that we noticed. Um, so there was a real appetite uh, for place-based work and place-based support and so for example creating place-based partnerships like with a university which may assist in um, convening fellows bringing fellows together but also youth engagement youth kind of activation and really diversifying um, the fellowship in terms of age so that that could be a great opportunity for engagement secondly looking at thematic clusters um, was another area of interest. So supporting existing fellows in their work, which I know Melly mentioned in the chat as well. And then also providing more opportunities for fellows to convene, to cluster, to kind of gather around certain topics of interest um, uh, and themes. So that's been another um, area of interest and fostering connections. So really maximizing the community platform, like we mentioned Circle for, um, and really making sure that it's tailored in the best way to suit the US um, network and, and the needs of fellows based here so that we can really use it for curated introductions and really a, a great kind of matchmaking based on areas of interest or areas of research or areas of work um, and making those place-based connections and then being able to go offline and meet up for a cup of coffee or, or what have you um, and to really facilitate um, networking at, at its best um, and making sure that it has improved searchability and the directory of US fellows so that the search functionality is really great. And then lastly, that intimacy piece. So making sure that um, the work that we are doing really kind of speaks to kind of vulnerability and resilience and, and how we as a community of people coming together are talking about our learnings and our failures um, and how best to navigate them. Um, and also on the kind of flip side of that, talking about how to scale the mentoring program, which we mentioned earlier on and how, how successful that has been in the past and how much um, interest there has been and appetite for that. So those are some of the kind of emerging findings. We have met, um, I think three times now. So we're still in the early days of kind of teasing out some opportunities for engagement kind of going forward. Um, I know that there are one or two fellows on this call um, and Shai, if you are comfortable at all speaking about this or some of the things that you noticed from this particular space or your personal experience, feel free to come off, um, off mute. Um, uh, but if not, or if I'm catching you on the hop, absolutely no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> I don't know if you're there, Shai, you may be away from your desk. I, I am here. You are. Okay, no worries. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk more about the engagement circle. Um, so I've had the pleasure of joining all three of our sessions over the last three months or so. I think it's been about three months. Yeah. Um, and really just working with the other fellows to identify ways that we can better, um, I guess, become more engaged as the U.S. branch of the RSA. And so we've had a lot of really great conversations about different opportunities, um, different ways that we can start to bring more U.S. fellows together, whether that's place-based or virtual or even through WhatsApp, um, mm -hmm. you know, ways to figure out if I'm going to like South by Southwest, what other RSA fellows are there and would they be interested in meeting up to discuss or to have, um, you know, a different kind of workshop on the side. So uh, we got a lot of ideas on our mural board. Um, I'm not sure if we're still welcoming more folks to the engagement circle, but I'm sure there might be opportunities for others to provide input. Um, I'm also on the testing team for the circle platform. Um, and so I've been there since it launched and providing feedback to the product developers there. Um, and it really will become this great resource where fellows can filter each other by location, um, identify each other by interest, whether that's sustainability or poverty alleviation and so forth. So I know we don't have a lot of time, but um, I'm happy to talk more about the engagement circle um, if you would like to connect on LinkedIn or at a different time. Thanks. That's great. Thank you so much, Shai. Um, just great to hear the, the personal experience. So as always, any questions, feel free to, to drop them in the chat or, or come off mute. Um, I'll give you all time to catch your breath there. But um, we wanted to open the floor to you all to see if there's any um, questions, comments, clarifications. Um, so now is your time for it to, to speak up. Um, and if everyone is either 
you know, running to another meeting, feel free to drop off. We know our time is precious and our days are busy. Um, but if you if you don't have many questions, but you would like to stay and meet other folks um, and, and connect with other people, we are happy to facilitate a pretty informal um, networking session for this time. So just wanted to open that up to you and kind of get some comments and thoughts on, on how you would like to use the remaining time. Because it's so rare, we're all in the same room together. So we want to make the most of it if we can. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm uh, David Hamilton Nichols, and I wanted to thank you for uh, you know, uh, le- curating this and leading a, a good uh, you know, event informative because I'm a new fellow as of the end of last year. And I just uh, would love to, you know, if the people don't have a bunch of questions or something, maybe uh, do this as you suggested as an informal uh, kind of meet and greet of, of each other. That's great. Thank you for coming off. Um coming off mute and nice to see your face and welcome. Um, This is a a really collaborative network of individuals. So we're really delighted to have you here. And thank you so much. Um, I don't see any other questions here. So um, Alexa, Sean and Rick, um, unless you all have any pressing additions, I'm gonna suggest that we break out into uh, little groups if for whoever is staying on the call, I see a few people have to drop off. so I just wanted to say before you all go, uh, a huge thank you to, um, to you all for joining us today, for giving up your time to, to bringing your energy and contributions and questions. Um, and I really just appreciate you, you showing up. Um, and we will be in touch via email. Uh, for everybody who registered, you will be getting um, a link to all of the various different resources, links, tools, um, contact details, you name it. We will share that with you all via email tomorrow um, at the latest probably, and as well as a recording um, of this event and the slides that we will share as well. So just wanted to say that um, and pass over to Alexa and Sean, if you have anything else to add, and then we will break out into um, into some groups. That'd be nice to get to know you all a bit better. Amazing. Thanks, Claire. You've done a terrific job facilitating, moderating, and I know there have been a ton of different resources and opportunities shared on the town hall today. So we're going to follow up with an email to folks in terms of some of those opportunities to step into voluntary roles, to join the Circle platform, to join us at PopTech this fall. Um, and you know, as questions uh, come up, feel free to reach out. We're Hello, also Chris. scheduling a number of one-on-ones, yeah, I'm all right, and thanks. Claire has her community hours. So just look forward to to diving in and being in community with folks. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I think we got cut across there by somebody. (laughs) So sorry about that. Um, But thanks again for joining us. And if you need to knock off or or head off to another meeting, go for it. If not, I'm going to stop recording um, and I'm going to um, break everybody into some groups and I'll pop some um, conversational uh, discussion prompts, which is always good. I love a good prompt to get the conversation going. Um, So thank you for joining us today and take care.